or like kind of have an idea of what the enemy is going for with first pick. Yeah, and as far as sort of champions that we were tracking uh, during that pregame talk, I'm still looking at the likes of the Jace. We've seen the Galio and Lucian band away, which I think is very intelligent to do from the yeah. side of Shalka. Now I'm sort of seeing them follow that up by a Jace band to make sure that Fnatic don't lock that in right away. And Frosco, something we're not seeing is targeting Abadage. So blue Whoa. side pick Ivern band away. Oh god. Well, I mean. My academy team has been playing it on uh, in, so in games already, so probably <laughs> they they think they may have transferred to the main team. Um, so I, it kind of makes sense to Bennett if you uh, actually do research. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm looking at him like this seems pretty troll to me. I, we have seen as like a Karthus counter pick, so maybe that's supposed to be an option here for Brox in the jungle. That's the Jace you're looking like at it. to be yep. taken away, and it opens up first picks. I think the Silas fits in really well because, of course, it is still flexible. While we have seen it perform pretty well in the mid lane today, you do have the options to throw it around. But the thing is, is the the one strategy that we really were talking about was trying to deny a comfort pick from. Abadage. He seems to be kind of the most unsettled or inconsistent member of Shalka. And I think it's super easy to say, okay, make sure at least in these first three picks, if not in second rotation, that we get Abadage something that he is super comfortable with. And he did have a phenomenal LeBlanc game the last time we saw it. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure um, if the bands overall made sense for Fnatic. As you said, uh, attacking Abadage as SK did last week would have probably done them better. And from what I've seen, Abadage's LeBlanc has always been solid. He's always been carrying. So. Uh, not quite sure about this one, but it makes sense to set up the Karthus with the Iron Man. Ooh, this is really interesting here. The Karthus Triple is flex. locked in as well as the Jarvan. I mean, right off the bat, I imagine it would be something like the Jarvan in the top lane, Silas in mid. But as we said, there is the ability to sort of move these picks around. And now, if you look towards Shalka's side, I think you want to be locking in something like the Alistar alongside of this Kai'Sa. It's a very strong 2v2 pairing, and they can make sure that they get that duo. And it's also a champion. Um, I mean, amazing, you were talking about how Ignar is roaming potential is so strong on a champion like Alistar. He's able to really time up with Memento and offer a lot of that hard CC. Uh, but now we should see more pinching of the jungle pools. So goodbye, Olaf. <laughs> goodbye, Olaf. Yeah, I mean, basically, when you when you have Karthus on your team, you kind of want to minimize the amount of early play potential the enemy has. So any gank potential jungler, something like the Olaf with the LeBlanc, or something like the Lee Sin, maybe even, Elise even. makes it, or Elise for jungles, for example, would make sense. Uh, so I, I do expect more Jonathan Pinches, yeah. Yeah, now what we're seeing from Shalka is the, the arms race in the bottom lane as Jax gets banned here. What but was that we'll... noise, Frost? What <laughs> yeah, was your reaction yeah, to Jax ban? I'm just, okay, so it, it could be, because there is triple flex from Fnatic, so, you know, the Karthus doesn't necessarily have to go into the jungle position. Um, and so maybe that's why they're choosing to sculpt out better matchups to figure out who is going to slot into these lanes by not banning away the likes of Olaf and Elise. Yeah, so trying to think back when Jarvan has been played top lane pretty consistently, I think Jax was actually a a favorable matchup into it. It's sort of outscaled in the side lane, so this makes me think even more that my earlier thought of Jarvan top is going to be correct, and that's how Fnatic want to set it up. But they want to take away Conqueror users that will outscale Jarvan in the 1v1. Silas also has a great matchup into LeBlanc in the mid lane. Yeah, it's, it's definitely decent. You still allow LeBlanc to have the playmaking, but honestly, LeBlanc should never be able to kill the Silas if the Silas plays right, so he gets free scaling and then uh, can be a menace later in the team fights. Uh, I like the AD carry events. Honestly, it makes sense to kind of deter Reckless from his main champions, um, especially because he has actually been successful last week on the Lucian. Uh, and Tristan has always been a comfort pick for him, just as the Dinah has been. So if you're Reckless, amazing, do you go for Sivir here or do you go for Jinx? Because it feels like Reckless, <laughs> oh, that... he, when he goes Jinx, he wants to 1v9. Okay, uh, and Sivir has a bad matchup in the alley. <laughs> as, as, as a jungler, I obviously have a uh, degree in psychology. I would, <laughs> uh, I would say that you don't pick the Sivir here because the enemy has the Alistar, so I would not want to see it. And I think that may actually have been what Chuck has been going for with bands where they kind of want to force him into Siva in, into Elisa. That seems like a better answer. Now we see the Zion Rakan coming in. That's really interesting here from Fnatic. I mean, I think we already saw some engage potential with this Jarvan in the composition, but now, and sort of an old school duo, I would say, with the Zaya Rakan here, it does give you some pretty decent laning 2v2 up against the Kai'Sa Allistar. It's really throwing me back to early 2018 here with this bottom lane, but then it gives Reckless a lot of protection against Alisin, Allistar, Kai'Sa, LeBlanc, all trying to dive him in these later game skirmishes. It's a blood in here. 
Uh, we thought that Vladimir might crop back up because of his ability to hyperscale into a side lane, because at some point there's just nothing that you can do to deal with him. But Jarvan actually can have a decent match to Vladimir because you can trap him. Well, let's step just a little bit back. We don't have the most amount of time. But we have to go to the casters. Froskuren, what do you make of uh, the team compositions that you see on your screen? Uh, I mean, I think we got the... I hope that swaps from Odo too, but <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I think that they did manage to get the superior jungle matchup, and that's really what I wanted. I wanted Ignar to be unlocked, I want Memento to have dueling potential there, and I want a strong side of the map, and you got comfort picks for Abadage. Yeah, I mean, the jungle matchup is definitely going to be important, but on the other side, I think Fnatic, if they can stall out late enough, have the scaling advantage, they have the superior 5v5, and a lot of stock is going to be put in Reckless to carry later. Yeah, I think Fnatic basically took one out of G2's playbook, try to basically have hyper aggressive lanes, especially on the top side of the map, and basically utilize the Karthus to facilitate a bit more damage in order to kill them level 6. Well, listen, we're just about to head to the castles. Before we do, down the line, now you've seen the draft. Who wins the game? Just give me the team name only. Frost uh, I'm going to go with Fnatic. Fnatic. Schalke. Fnatic, Fnatic, Schalke. Let's see who comes out on top as we head to the castles to take us into game. Thank you very much, Quickshot. Unsurprising that Amazing went with Schalke, I'll be honest. But a lot of Fnatic hope coming from our analyst desk there, Vedius. Would you be on the on the Fnatic train as well, looking at these drafts? Well, as an unbiased caster, I believe that no team is favored until they hit the rift. Okay, they, uh, they've loaded in now, so now which team is favored? they hit the rift, we can talk about which team is favored. So, um, I agree with the analysts. We don't need to say anything. No, I'm kidding. Um, so what I'm looking at from this draft from the side of Schalke is I think they need to play around mid lane. I think they have to focus on trying to put Nemesis behind with the LeBlanc. Um, one of the things that we heard the analyst desk talking a little bit about was the scaling on the side of Fnatic. I definitely think it is stronger. I think Silas, assuming that he goes very much more towards the tank build, will be way stronger later on to the game than the LeBlanc will just in terms of actual 5v5, obviously, because LeBlanc can be challenging to play in 5v5 as well. But the other thing is, before I get into that, sorry. Um, I think that they just have a lot of crowd control, a lot of area of effect damage, and Fnatic showcased last week how strong their team fighting is. So we see a bit it's of a already onto Odo here. Vox is on the chase. Memento comes across, but Nemesis looking for that second Where's he gonna go? Yeah, you haven't really got many places to go. We'll try and flash away. There's the spear. Second he comes out, and Odo uses his flash. Fnatic level one coming up trumps once again. So I don't know if Brox is going to really try and gank anywhere in the early. Remember that the base nerf damages that happened to his Q did affect his early clear speed. Um, but to kind of go back to the comps, sorry, before I go off too much tangent, Shaka want to play around mid. I think okay. Fnatic want to play around uh, bot, especially once they hit level 6. But they do have the options of playing around top as well. Vlad is very weak in the early levels, and you can look to bully him. So Okay, that makes sense. You've burned his flash already as well, so you have the opportunity to go for a repeat gank there. Now, uh, I kind of want to talk about some of the matchups. What I've noticed is that Fnatic are running double Conqueror on both mid and top. I don't fully agree with the Conqueror in the top lane. Uh, something that we've actually seen against many uh, ranged matchups is to actually run airy because of how aggressive you can be. But I would argue that because Whippo is um, strong at early levels versus the Vladimir who's very weak, his goal is to actually just get into your face uh, generate those stacks very quickly uh, and then just be a bully in lane rather than just relying on those airy procs to just slowly chip away. The Silas Conqueror is quite unique to me uh, and I would assume that he builds it up because of how quickly you can channel both your passive autos along with your abilities. So uh, remember that you can now generate stacks off of both abilities and auto attacks which means you have potentially two on your Q, you then have uh, your E, you then have all the autos, you have your W, so there's actually quite a lot of uh, ways to stack that Q up. I'll keep our eyes on how many stacks Nemesis is getting in some of these fights. Uh, he is on a melee champion, so it will stick around for the entire duration, not the short, short and stacking duration that we see on ranged champs. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that Fnatic can play around top and that uh, Whippo is on this Jarvan. Uh, that was a more aggressive pick than we've seen him on recently because in the last few weeks, Whippo has been very much the sacrificial lamb for Fnatic. He, he said it himself, he's like, it feels bad because I go into every game knowing my team is not going to play around me and my intention is just not to die. And this composition feels a little bit more like we could see Fnatic going through this top lane. No. no? Um, <laughs> uh, while we talked about it, it is an option, 
I don't think they need to. When you okay. have a Zaya Rakan, to me, that spells the lane that you should try to play through. Oh, Whipper just wins one one though. And you don't need to play through a lane that's just stomping anyway. Yeah. We talked about it. The Conqueror is much more about being that lane bully. Level three, high base stats. And Whippo gets a solo kill onto Odawamne. And unfortunately for him, that means that Brox is going to be like, well, now I don't even need to gang top lane. But excellent stuff from Whippo in the early game. That's exactly what Fnatic fans want to see. Really strong stuff. Boxer trying to get in for the invade here. Sitting away Memento's blue. It's resetting just a little bit. Boxer does have the sniper. So there's Memento. Memento yeah, will be the one to secure it. Slightly early, as you say, from Broxer. Now, fans at home may be like, hang on. Carthus isn't supposed to invade. How does that work? Well, the reason it works is because of lane priority. One of my favorite things ever. Um, you'll notice that Nemesis has push in mid, uh, and you'll also see that the bot lane for Fnatic is pushing in heavily, which means the Broxa, even though weaker in a 1v1 against Lee Sin, has the numbers advantage because Hillisang and Nemesis can oh. move into support should they need it. So that's why he was able to invade. He couldn't quite steal away the blue buff, but still gen utilizing the pressure that he has elsewhere on the map. You can see Odo struggling to trade into Whipper here on the top side. We'll have the flash up sooner than the Fnatic top laner, so has an opportunity when that comes back up. But knowing the momentum's on the bottom side of the map, Whippo very willing just to step forward, especially with his extra aggressive items at the moment, double long sword. So you can actually see in this mid lane matchup so far, the LeBlanc isn't winning. Uh, ooh, bit of a trade down towards the bottom side of the map. That's fine. So I, th I thought you were going to continue on yes, your Yes, I was. So I thought you wanted to quickly talk about that, but you no. seem good. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this matchup. Um, the thing about Silas that I think a lot of people don't realize is his wave clear is ridiculous. Uh, Silas is maxing Q. This is something that a lot more Silas's have been doing recently, and it just melts through waves. And the thing that LeBlanc often struggles with at early levels is high wave clear champions. True. Because uh, she wants to be in a position where the wave is actually neutral, and she can zone you away from the farm. But the thing about uh, Silas is he has so much sustain that every time LeBlanc tries to double you in to try and harass, you can then immediately double you back. You can get a lot of your health back. You can deal a decent amount of damage. And then you can clear the wave because her W is gone and you're on a much lower cooldown. So while there is uh, the opportunity because the Lee Sin LeBlanc duo is very strong, it gives you a strong two versus two, especially against the Karthus uh, Silas, in terms of the actual straight up 1v1, I feel that it is pretty heavily Silas for you. And Brox is coming up towards the top side of the map to give a little bit of vision for Whipper. We'll just put a pink ward down there and they'll clear out any wards coming out. Ignar's doing a good job actually here of holding the wave for Upset so he can come back. He's gone back, picked up that BF sword. The wave will push into tower as Upset arrives. Do you want to talk a little bit about this bot lane matchup? We haven't focused on it, ideally, but Nemesis is running the fleet footwork here on the Zyra. Reckless. Oh, sorry, Reckless, not Nemesis. Uh, and this, the reason why I'm glad you brought this one up, Medic. Oh, wow. Jungler, jungler. Both of them. Anything I do the play by play thing. Well, we don't need to do it quite yet. Because there's nothing. Don't you do the whole posture? Oh, we can do posture. Hanging posture. around, looking for an opportunity. Build the intensity as Nemesis jumps in, building up those Conqueror stacks. But neither of the jungler's actually going to do too much. Boxer, still not level six. Great, really like that, Medic. Good job. Thanks. So, uh, you want to talk about fleet footwork? I did. Uh, the reason why I like that you bring this up is because typically we see lethal tempo. Uh, the cool thing about lethal tempo is it's very easy to proc with things like Q, and then you can generate a bunch of feathers, and you have all this attack speed, and you do a lot of damage basically. However, Reckless has the preference to go for fleet footwork, and the reason for that is because Hillisang likes to roll. So Reckless is much more of the opinion that he wants that sustain, he wants that extra bit of mobility and kite power, whereas his support loves to move around the map. So if he's in this 1v2 situation, he'll be a little safer. Keep our eyes on Hillisang as he does move uh, up towards the river, just get some vision control. And something I want to bring attention to over the last few weeks when Fnatic have been on this upswing, this upsurge of performance, is their early game. See, in weeks five and six, they have 100% of first towers. Their deaths at 15 are much lower than before, and they get these big gold advantages at the 15-minute mark as well. And you have to think that now that Brox has hit level six, we'll start to see Fnatic trying to accelerate this gold lead just a little bit. Yeah, and uh, the early game has definitely improved. I personally attribute that a lot more to Hellasang being on Playmakers and Broxa having an early game plan that he commits to and actually executes upon. Now, he is on a Karthus, but still his early game has gone extremely well. Uh, he's been able to keep track of what Memento has been up to. And again, look at all this vision being set up around Nemesis and towards the bottom half of the map. He's basically saying, you know what? I can keep you safe. You play as aggressively as you want. 
Oh. They'll be nice and happy as they say that. Nemesis gets chained up, the Ignite comes out as well, Ignite there yeah. in time. Memento with the first kill of the game for Schalke. Nemesis just overstepped a little bit against Abaddon. Ah, I'm getting a lot of caster curses today, I do apologize about that Nemesis, but you should have spotted that Ignar was roaming up through the river because you had all that vision available to you that Broxa did set up. He doesn't have his teleport available. He did have the flash, but he chose not to use it. And it means that Abadage ends up helping his team find that first kill now with a level advantage. And we can take a quick look back at it. Ignar is literally standing on a ward. He clears it out. Nemesis gets hit by the second chain. Just flash into your turret, mate. Ignar's not level six. That was greedy. You deserve to die. Anyway. Um, as in he deserved to die in that situation. There wasn't no... Yeah, <laughs> Do I, not take it in the wrong context there. No. In, in that situation... He made a mistake. The way the Nemesis he played... he deserved to die for that yes, mistake. I totally agree. That's, that's what happened. Got out of that situation. And it, mean, it means the goal difference between these two teams is now evened up again. Uh, I was expecting with Voxa getting to this Requiem, having that level 6, having the, sort of the game-changing ultimate on the Carthus, we'd see a little bit more out of Fnatic, but they seem willing just to play with the status quo, accept how things are going at the moment. A bit of a CS lead actually building up for upset in the bottom lane. Oh, yeah. About 20 farm or so. And a lot of this actually came back to when Ignar throws the wave and we pulled attention to it. Uh, but Reckless has just not quite been able to catch back up to what was a relatively good freeze from the Schalke bottom lane. That's yeah, a really good spot there, Medic. Um, and it's also due to the fact that we have seen Hillsang moving up through the river a decent amount as well. But Ignar now the one setting up these rooms. And if we think back to early split Schalke, it was uh, Ignar and Memento working together that actually built up a lot of these early game leads for Schalke. And now that Ignar has already completed the mobility boots and is looking for another play on the mid lane, it kind of a, a throwback to where Schalke found so much success and, uh, and hopefully they can look to replicate it. So as a support man, I'm always interested in looking at uh, itemization choices, especially first rotation on Rakan, because you have a few different options. Actually, it looks like Hillasang is going towards the Zeke's here, but it's gone double cloth armor to start it off. So getting himself as armor heavy as possible to deal with the Lee Sing ganks. And Vox actually caught out here as Ignar gets in behind the tower. Abadaji flashes across the wall. Vox is going to be shielded up. Ignar pops the ultimate, but Vox is still very healthy. Ignar caught underneath the tower here, charmed up as well. And Fnatic react properly to a fight. Looks like it was a kill in the top lane as well as Brippo just takes down Odo in the, top, in the uh, 1v1. So while Schalke slowly find their way back into the game, they immediately throw it away by being way too over eager. Ignar, he didn't need to follow up on that chain underneath the tower. They'd already gotten the flash out from Brock, so they should have been happy. It would have forced the bottom lane of Fnatic to play more defensively. But to make matters even worse for Schalke, Dwipo ends up finding his second solo kill of the game. And now we're going to take a quick look back at how that happened. Dwipo, he doesn't find the knockup. But here you can see he's building up those Conqueror stacks. He's doing a decent amount of damage. He locks him in just before he goes into the pool. And then he gets a second knock of beautiful stuff. And now more fighting. Teleport coming in here though. It looks like Whippo's gonna be the one to join the fight. He has Nemesis first. There's the Requiem as well as Memento goes down to about half HP. Uh, Whippo is actually teleporting back to base. Engaging. Here comes Abadage. Abadage behind them. Schalke trying to find an answer to this early Fnatic pressure. There's a teleport in from Whippo. Abadage the one caught out. He jumps back. Teleport. Whippo looking for the knockup. Memento needs to dodge away, but he can't dodge from that. Whippo on a killing spree. 3 and 0 oh now on this job. Whippo having a monster of a game, kind of putting Fnatic on his back right now, proving that he doesn't need resources to be a high impact player. And now he's looking for more. Jumps in. Abadage can jump away. Ignar has the stun just about to come back. Back up, but Whippo will just chase him away. And Ignar has to burn the flash as well. Very reminiscent to the Origin game here when Fnatic just isolated that bottom lane, were able to get leads here. They're using the pressure that Whippo got top to now pressure down towards this bottom side. Beautiful stuff from Whippo, utilizing his TP at just the right moment. Remember that he doesn't TP immediately. Nemesis is the one that TPs first. And then, once Fnatic realizes, okay, we're getting re-engaged on by Schalke, that's when Whippo arrives and is able to turn around the situation, getting a kill, helping the team secure a couple of tower plates and more gold for his bot lane, and overall, helping Fnatic get themselves a 3,000 gold lead. Let's have another look at this fight, because Schalke, you can feel the intensity. You can feel they're trying to force things here, because they know they're starting to fall behind. Ooh, really like the kick there from Memento. He reads Hillasang, trying to interrupt him. 
But then here comes the teleport in from Nemesis. You think with the ultimate that's going to be enough, but the heal from Upset is enough to get Memento out of the situation. And then again, Ignar going for the re-engage initially looks dangerous, but he knows that Abadage is coming in from behind. The problem is the cooldowns, and they've got to respect the potential teleport. So Abadage ducks out, but then Bwipo arrives. And unfortunately, Memento, he overstays. He ends up dropping, and Bwipo picks himself up another kill. And chases Abadage out afterwards and burn a couple of flashes. Broxa now reaping the benefits of his incredibly strong top lane will take this Rift Herald. I want to just have a quick look at exactly how far ahead Whippo is after this fight happens because Ignar coming in and Mr. steals away the ultimate. Rift Herald down to about 3000 HP. Shalka still looking to make plays if they can. Rift Herald so low. Memento looking for the steal. Don't quite see if he gets that, but Hillisang jumps up towards the other side. Upset jumps up to the back line though. Already Nemesis down. Memento shortly to follow. You have to feel, but already and Fnatic are just surrounded Ooh. by four members of Schalke here. Not in a good spot at all. Broxa has to run away. Whipper will fall to Upset. That's the shutdown for him. And that is a very good collapse from Schalke. Schalke end up finding a bunch of kills. Ends up being a one for two, but while all that is happening, Reckless has been sitting bot lane and securing a tower. He ends up getting a number of plays. I don't know if he managed to get it. Did, what? Okay, Hillisang really wanted that eye. Yeah, uh, ends up Gotta flashing get it. for it. He gets it though. But I mean, that, that means that his flash engage is gone. Uh, I don't know if you really need to flash that. Anyway, he did it, he secures it, uh, and Reckless ends up picking up that bot tower. Now, I'm not entirely sure if he got all the plates, but overall, he's going to get a lot of gold for taking that solo. So. What we'll see here is the Nemesis is the one that gets engaged on initially. He's just trying to zone Schalke away along with Hillisang. Memento then splits up from his team, but Hillisang goes all in without the support from Gwipro. I think that he was just a little too quick to engage without proper follow-up from the rest of his team. And this is one of those situations where normally the EQ combo would work, but because he throws it onto terrain, the, the flag gets pushed just out of range, which means that he can't quite drag to it. And we get to see the flash. I guess he was worried that it was it's just about out. to disappear, yeah. so... Oh, we're gonna get a slow-mo. There we go. <sighs> oh... He gets it. I really don't think he needed a flash. Oh, uh, but you, like... Yeah. I think the thing is, yes, you burn your flash, you'll be back up in five minutes, but you do have the engage potential out of Whippo anyway, and Nemesis is going to Oh, I actually had a ping to my ear that it was less than two seconds. Oh, so okay, so, yeah, give credit knows, to Hillis yeah, like that. He knows better than Go. I do. There you go. Good stuff all round. Boxer going to catch our momentum just a little bit here. 3,000 gold lead for Fnatic, 15 minutes in. Once again, the early game coming out well. We see Reckless with the Essence Reaver now complete on that Zaya. Still no first item on upset, but we've seen what Kaisers can do when you start getting, you know, a couple of items under your belt. So Shao could definitely not out of it. And Fnatic will be trying to utilize the pressure they have in a very strong top laner to continue to accelerate this game away. So we've seen a number of uh, Silas builds, but typically when he has played in mid, he goes much more towards the tanky route. Uh, when he has a Jarvan that's this strong, I think it's fine, but you also have a Karthus as well. So you're more than enough damage, meaning that you can afford to be that more tanky disruptor uh, champion in these team fights. Speaking of, we now have Fnatic grouped up as five in the mid. Bot has been pushed in and Upset is catching the wave top, which means that there is no one to answer the siege from Fnatic and they may be able to secure two turrets. Well, they'll definitely get the first, but we would have liked to get a little bit more damage down because the Rift would have not taken any damage itself. The Re Requiem used here just to force them away, looking for that second tower, as you say. Oduwame has the flank potential. Upset there as well on his way to join the fight, but Schalke... Oh, Abadage is going to go all the way in, just ruin it straight away. What were you doing? You can't do that. Memento caught out here as well. We'll just get chased away from Fnat uh, by Fnatic, but that was that was weak from Abadaga. That was a huge mistake. Uh, the problem was that he just tries to zone them away when they're already backing off. There's no need to try and commit to that play when the risk is so great. And he ends up getting immediately punished, and it's from the feathers from Reckless as well, which is the worst part about it. So, as you identified, the ultimate came out to zone them away from the tower, they secure it. And Abadaga goes in onto Reckless, trying to chunk him out, but then he gets rooted up. The charm and knockup comes in for Hillisang as well. And they almost get the kill onto Memento, but he still has the W, the safeguard, to get out of that tricky situation. And this has been a concern with Abadage. Over the last three games, the second half of the split, he's been dying a lot more in the early game. Has his last in all of these deaths percentages. So he has the highest death share of any mid laner, the highest deaths per game of any mid laner, and the highest deaths at 15 minutes of any mid laner as well. Here, he had an okay first 15 minutes, but we can see sometimes just taking that step too far and ultimately he just dies too much yeah. and sometimes it's because he makes a mistake uh, sometimes it has been because teams have put pressure on him but it feels like that he's a weak point that teams have looked to punish and again they're looking to punish him right now all right Hedison doesn't have ult here so this isn't the easiest engage in the world i would argue we'll just jump away 
It helps that Abadagi could read a book in the amount of time it took Hillisang to use a W. Well, that's um, because W on Wakan isn't good anymore. <laughs> it's very 9.5 is getting buffed. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. Apparently. Uh, that's what I've heard. That's cool. Um, but right now, we're still on 9.4. That we are. And that means that he's going to have to rely a lot more on his ultimate and his flash to guarantee that kind of lockdown onto Abadage. Meanwhile, the rest of Schalke actually making their way up towards the top side of the map. Very little vision on the side of Fnatic. Ooh, and Hillisang. Yeah, he can't face check into that. Hillisang kick back. Upset jumps in. Good route from Reckless to stop Abadage, but chains aren't going to connect either, which means Schalke will just have to take a single kill out of it. That's an oopsie daisy. Uh, it's kind of classic killer saying too. He should have respected who was where on the map. And if we could see no one from Schalke, he should have realized that he sees no one from Schalke. And you definitely don't W into the bush. Exactly. Um, I guess he assumed that he'd still be safe because Reckless was nearby. And obviously the E range is longer when you're with Desire. But still, ends up getting punished. Meanwhile, Whippo still... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty strong spot. <laughs> Level advantage. Strong. Zonia's first from Odawamne, meaning it's... Yeah, you've got a bit of extra tankiness, but Whippo has so many extra stats over the Vladimir right now. Two Sonya's levels. rush is like the worst feeling ever. It never feels good to buy first. It's like great as like a third or fourth item, but first, it doesn't give you enough AP to really trade very well. The 10% CDR doesn't feel that impactful. Really, really horrible item. So he's just building it for survivability. It definitely means that Whippo shouldn't be able to solo kill him anymore. Uh, and Odoan is going to have to wait a long time before his scaling really kicks in. Fnatic sitting in a very good spot there. 5,000 gold ahead. Five and seven across the course of this split have been on the road back to playoffs, I think you can say. They started off incredibly slowly, kind of been sprinting towards that finish line. And a win against Schalke would be very impactful in, the, in their prospects. Tie them up with Misfits and it would yep. make their game versus Misfits that all the more important. A lot of the results have actually benefited um, Fnatic, today. Fnatic uh, a lot, um, but a win here again. It was one of the, th this was one of those games where it wasn't must win in my opinion, no. um, but definitely beneficial, uh, especially when you're kind of looking for playoff seed. And the thing is for Fnatic as well, it's the perfect time to play against Schalke because Schalke on this downswing, Fnatic on an upswing as they get into the jungle here. But when you're playing against a team that have lost three of the last four games, they need to go in for fights like this. Ignar pops the ultimate. Whippo's still there, the Cataclysm's already been used, the chase onto Ignite is quite big, but Abadage jumping across the wall but jumping back as well, and you can see Upset doesn't really have the damage yet. So the great thing uh, for Fnatic is that because of the amount of pressure that Whippo was generating bot, he had a massive window where he could walk up and group with his team, and this allowed them to gain full vision control over the top side of the jungle, whereas Odoamne, he didn't want to TP in, he knew how weak he'd be, so this just forced the Shalker to back away. While Fnatic don't convert it into anything, they get the flash out from Ignar, they get good vision control, and like this makes it harder for Schalke to actually approach the river and gain control around that Baron area. So then what are Schalke's next steps? What are you looking for here? Are you still saying we need another item, we need another half an item here or there? Or can you start to make a few inroads, make a few plays? Well, I think it's really difficult for them, given that they didn't get the LeBlanc ahead. I think she's in a fine spot right now, and the fact that the Silas fall behind a little bit is beneficial for them. Um, but... I'm not afraid of this LeBlanc one-shotting anyone at this point in time. Perhaps if he's able to kill Broxer at the start of the fight, then they have a chance, but even then. I just kind of look at this comp from Schalke and I see the two massive scaling opportunities in the Vladimir and the Kaiser, and I think maybe that's how Schalke turn around. Maybe if they can just stall out to late game, LeBlanc can still be very relevant in the late game with the amount of burst that she has, chunking targets out before a fight even begins. Um, but for now, if they try to force a fight, I think they're just going to lose. Okay. I think it's a lot easier for Fnatic to just group and force, so Schalke just have to stall. So Fnatic get priority on the next few neutral objectives. They're trying to use it to go for this bottom lane. At towers, a cloud break up in seven seconds. Baron up as well. Odoamne trading onto Hillisang here, but not going to be able to do too much, as we said. That Zonya's first, not giving him a huge amount of damage. Looks like cloud going to be the objective for Fnatic. They continue to keep around this five, 6,000 gold lead or so. They're not extending it, but they don't really need to right now. No, this is absolutely fine. For now. Yeah. They're, a, they're an okay spot. I, I wonder how much priority they'll put on the Baron. They do have a pretty fast Baron taking team, and they have a number of members that can tank it up as well. Um, but they may just rely on the fact that Jarvan's so strong as side lane that he's eventually going to take that tower. And so they might just look to play this one four strat where they keep mid and top pushing as much as possible and then just allow Bwipo to do what he's done all game. 
It does feel like there's a point where the Vladimir outscales the Jarvan, though. Like after you get two, maybe two and a half items. Oh, no, at this turn. point, he, um, because of how far behind he is and the fact that the, what's the word, Hex Drinker has yeah. been completed along with Merc Treads, you basically need a Void Staff. So you need Void Staff, you'll need the Proto, Proto. Belt, and you'll need another item. So maybe Spirit Massage death or death Oh, Trinity. no, sorry, the, um, the, the Speedy Globe thing. Oh, the Speedy Globe thing. Yes. Uh, Spellbinder. That's the one. Um, once he's got those, then I would say he's in a better spot. But okay. even then, like, look at how much damage Bobo has. So we're still waiting on four items or so on that Vladimir. He's yes. A long way away. But the Kaiser's really strong, though. That's, That's one of the bright sides. Upset's farmed really, really well. Um, something that Amazing said at the beginning of the day was he feels Upset has kind of uh, outshone Reckless as, like, now the most consistent AD carry in the league. Someone you could always rely on in late-game team fights. And he's had a really good laning phase. And... Uh, I think that he can still be someone that you rely on as the game progresses. It looks like Fnatic might be uh, putting some eggs in the Baron basket because they're setting up this vision control around here, getting the deep wards in, clearing out any wards they see from Schalke as well. So at least making Schalke step into blindness near the Nasher rather than just hard forcing that 1-4. So what you'll see though is note how Fnatic get vision, they then use it to push mid and top, and then they actually have Whippo go back towards the bot lane. And Shako spent all this time clearing out the vision. The Whippo can then start setting up the siege again. And what this does is it creates these things called windows. And the thing about windows is they're, they're windows of opportunity. Um, and basically, because Oduamne will be forced to catch this wave, Fnatic can create a five versus four, which means that they can either force the teleport out from Oduamne, or they can look for a pick or they can rush the Baron. Um, basically, because they have more numbers, they're the ones dictating the setting of the battlefield. Okay. Um, and so they'll be the ones in the advantage. Now, Hellasang did fail to clear out that ward, which kind of sucks for him. Um, I get it afterwards, it's fine. Yeah, there we are. Got enough pink wards. He then moves his pink ward to where the Blast Cone is to make sure they don't couldn't get flanked by Oduwamne if they go for the Baron. But you'll notice, you know, you talked about it earlier in the Misfits Vitality game, there are no out of towers down yet for Fnatic, which means that it's impossible for Schalke to push past the river, which means Baron control is pretty much impossible because they can never gain priority on mid. So Fnatic don't actually have to rush anything because they know that Whippo just has so much pressure on a side lane, they're just waiting for Schalke to either mess up and re uh, position poorly or make a mistake that they can then quickly punish and then convert it into an objective, or again, they might just force the objective to force Schalke to come to them. We know Schalke are a relatively good reactive team. They're very quick at reacting to what their enemies do. So Fnatic will be aware of that and probably will be a little bit cautious as to just like hard forcing a Baron or hard forcing a fight. They're playing around these windows that you talk about. And the game it always settles into a kind of a little bit of a lull around this point of the game, right? Because Fnatic don't have to hard force anything. They don't have to be uh, too aggressive with the way they make plays. They're happy just to wait things out. And I Schalke... think they could now, though. Yeah. Now is the point in time. Because just have a look at the items. GA now finished for the uh, Jarvan. Jarvan. Uh, Lich Bane is now done for Nemesis. Surprise, he's going more of the aggro build rather than defensive one. Um, but you also have three items done on, the, on Reckless. And you have... The Morello completed on... Well, it's more to do with the fact that level 13 on the Carthus. So, now, let's force something, Fnatic. Let's see what you can do. Because I think now is the prime time to actually create an opportunity for yourself. All right, trying to force onto Ignar. Hillisang does have the quickness here, but just trying to get that Alistair low, and then we'll set up towards the top side. Get mid-priority, push out the wave, and then clear out all this vision once again. We did see there Schalke 0 and 4 when they've been behind at the 15-minute mark. 0 and 3 in the second half of the split, yet to win a game this half. Abadage caught out, has to flash. Respect to Hillisang with that ultimate. Didn't have his ultimate up, so he didn't have the second dash. Now Fnatic have full vision control. You can see that they're actually just sacrificing oh. from the bot side. Whippo gets engaged on. Straight on towards Whippo. Memento jumping away. Ignar low as well as Pop the ultimate. He's quite tanky. Quickness comes out from Hillisang. Pull use from Odawamne. Ignar goes down. Fnatic now in a 4v5 situ uh, 5v4 pitch situation. Abadage jumps in again, but still not really doing that much. Just chipping away 
Fnatic. And we talked about it. This is the time when Fnatic want to try and force something. They find the first pick onto Ignar. He now doesn't have his ultimate available and will be dead for 20 seconds. And so Fnatic will now force the Baron. There is no vision in this area of the map. Shaka have to check blind and are checking into a level 15 Whippo that's hungry for blood. Nemesis this chase on to Odo That's the Requiem as well. Used by the Carthus. That's one down. Vox on a killing spree. Odo dies as well. Memento trying to get in, but he's gone. And Fnatic clean up house. Take down the Nasher. And with it, they have a 10,000 gold lead. Very clean League of Legends from the side of Fnatic. Everything was done to perfection. They leveraged their power spikes. They played around vision very well. But you have to give so much props to this man in the top lane, Whippo. The fact that he built these early game leads, the fact that he was so strong on the job and the amount of pressure that he generated in the side lane is so uh, a big part of why Fnatic is even in this position in the first place. Now just pushing down this mid in here as well. They're going to break open the base of Schalke. Still eight seconds left on Abelage, 10 on Odoamne. Schalke in all kinds of pain now as Fnatic just open up their base. Inhib down in the mid lane. They're going to reset. Easy enough for them to do. And 28 minutes on the clock. Fnatic seem to have this game on lock. And yeah, they don't want to over aggress. They don't want to commit too hard. And it's really difficult for Schalke to come back at this point in time. It's really easy for Fnatic to force these kind of team fights. And as we look at this Alienware replay, you will see that Bwipo, he doesn't care about getting engaged. Oh! Anymore. Ooh, Droxa. Upset used the ultimate, it looks like. Must have hit a long range Void Seeker, and then jumped in. Okay, well, Broxa loses his flash. Perhaps he overstayed there. Bit of a blunder. But uh, yeah, Bwipo. He doesn't mind getting engaged upon. He was able to turn that around pretty cleanly. He's a very tanky man, especially now level 16. Uh, yeah, and the thing is, while Schalke do have that like scaling option of like the Vladimir and the uh, the Kaiser, they're just too far behind now. Yep. Upset Abadagi, rather, he's in some danger. Whippo has found him, and he is just forcing him back. That's the thing with the LeBron. You can escape relatively easily with the distortion, assuming you have it up. We do see three items on the on upset, as you say. That's a glimmer of hope, maybe, but it's probably the faintest glimmer I have seen today. Reckless going to take down this tower. Mid lane supers are on their way, about halfway through that lane at the moment, and soon they will be pushing on to the Nexus Towers of Schalke. Schalke now split. It's the 1 4 from Fnatic. Whippo by himself. The rest of Fnatic down towards this bottom side. Super minions also helping in the mid lane. Whippo will secure a tower. Odoama unfortunately cannot handle him as he continues to push. A long uh, way away from four items on that planet. <laughs> yep, a long way away indeed. And Nemesis will once again steal away Ignar's ultimate. And here we are. They're breaking into the base. Another fight happens in top lane. Yeah, Odo Omni is just getting ch chunked out by Whippo. We'll be able to survive. The Hemoplake heals him up as well, but already the inhibitor down in this bottom side. Fnatic knocking on the door. Looking for that sixth win of the split. Upset engaged on the Requiem comes out as well. Upset trying to survive. We'll get chased back to his fountain, but all of the inhibitors are down, and Fnatic don't really care about the kills. All they see is the Nexus, a triple charm into knock-up. They're going to clean this one up. The Nexus goes down, and Fnatic get their sixth win of the season. One step closer to playoffs for Fnatic, and this was a very clean game. Arguably not a must-win one, but definitely a valuable one. This will tie them up with the likes of Misfits, It'll get them that one step closer to even Schalke in the standings, who's now sitting at seven and six. Yep. And while at the beginning of the day, we said both Splice and Schalke statistically looked like they were kind of shoo-ins for playoffs. These standings have now shaken up pretty yeah. significantly. The, the middle of the pack is very close, and it is nothing but a toss-up as to who will be able to make that way into the top six and secure a spot in playoffs. We have some eight teams sitting at seven and six now, a couple at six and seven as well. It's a very, very close middle of the table. And as much as we can run scenarios and we can give teams 50-50 odds, it's never like that. You have teams on a rise, you have teams on a fall. And at the moment, it looks like Schalke just haven't quite got their game together. Nope. I personally wasn't a massive fan of the LeBlanc pick. I feel like they didn't play around it very effectively. You put a lot of pressure on a player who, in my opinion, has been underperforming over the last two weeks. And while it's all well and good to have confidence in your players, ultimately, I think you should have tried to play around your strengths. Odo Amne, a very solid in the side lane. Even though today, he ultimately got outplayed uh, by Bwipo, you still also have a very strong two versus two down towards the bot side of the map, who were also just hard winning lane. It's true. Uh, and we just didn't see any kind of early game impact from Memento. So I feel like overall, we didn't see much from Schalke no. this game. Uh, and it was pretty much 
the Bwipo show, he got his lead, he then brought his lead to the bot lane, and he helped them secure that tower, and the moment that tower went and the map opened up, it pretty much became a slow, crushing defeat in favor of Fnatic. But that's exactly what you want if you're a Fnatic fan, right? You just want to see them close out games, clean, methodical play style from them. It's working out really well for them at the moment, and I think they've, especially this game, they found a play style that just seems to really work for them. Right? Get Bwipo a bit of an early lead in terms of the flash. They didn't get him an early He got himself <laughs> no, an early no, no, no. lead. They oh, burned the flash on Odo, which is see, why Whippo could get those early kills, right? Sure. So put a, a tiny bit of time into him. Give him 1% jungle proximity, yeah. and then he'll turn it into a win. Hey, if, if your top laner can do that, why not give him <laughs> the 1%? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, very impressed from Whippo. And, but uh, <laughs> it's one of those situations where I think he demonstrated that even if he doesn't get resources, he can still have an impact. Yeah. And it just makes you wonder what happens if you then give this man resources, exactly. right? What can this team do? So I still think there's room uh, for what Fnatic can show us throughout the rest of the split. Definitely a strong contender coming into playoffs, but they still have to lock in that spot. And with only five games left to go, everything is up for grabs. And what is the hashtag, Menic? Flounder. Every game Flounder counts. Princess. Gonna be an exciting one. Now tell us, who are our player of the game? Well, after all the action, you guys can vote for your player of the game at Lolly Sports on Twitter. We've narrowed it down to Whippo, Abroxa, and Reckless. And it's definitely one of the Bs, and definitely the BW. I Whippo. mean, uh, ultimately, yeah, I think that Whippo had the ultimate, uh, had the biggest yeah, impact in this game. He had the ultimate game. Ultimately, yeah. he had the ultimate game. Yes, I was very impressed with his job, and, uh, and I think he was a large part of the why they won. I think he was the majority of why they won. In all honesty, they didn't have to put too much pressure into him. He got them ahead. But for more on Fnatic's win, we're going to talk to, to Law and Reckless. Thank you, Medic, and thank you, Reckless, for joining me. You took down Origin, you took down Vitality, and this week you take down Schalke and Ulfir. Do you feel like these teams are underperforming right now, or is it you catching up? I think it's mostly us catching up. I feel like in the beginning of the split, we were really bad. So now that we've kind of found our groove again, we managed to play just fine against these teams. And honestly, the games were kind of close last week. So even though we won all of them, I feel like it wasn't like a clear showing of us dominating our opponents. It was much more just about us kind of figuring out again what we can do to win games. I was talking about this to, to uh, Youngbug a few weeks back about the fact that uh, Riot bring up a new patch and maybe this new patch could help, uh, could help you, especially in the bot lane and the AD carries. Do you feel like this has some kind of impact or is it something else in the team that makes you shine right now? Uh, I think the patch for sure helped me because it allowed me to not run into Lucian every game or have to play Astral every game. So it obviously helped me because I now have the opportunity to play more crit ADCs. But at the same time, I think our success doesn't necessarily come from, from me specifically. I think it comes from us just playing together. Honestly, I feel like in the beginning we were kind of one by one rather than uh, five together. And in these last three games, we have been doing stuff together, even though some of them were questionable. It was still always together. And I think that's the change that made the biggest difference. And that's the thing that we're going to keep on working as, keep on working on as well for the future, because we know that if we just keep doing stuff together, then the wins are going to come. It's weird for me to analyze your playstyle because in the last weeks, uh, you abandoned Wipo, let him on his island to focus more on you, and then today he shines so much. So what is Fnatic's playstyle right now? I think our playstyle is just like I said, we, we try to do everything together. So in this case, Wipo got a solo kill, I think at level three, maybe level four, I'm not sure, but somewhere in the early parts, he got a solo kill, and then we kind of all just made sure that he had a good time in the top lane so that he had the opportunity to carry in the end. Because if then instead we know we try to throw everything on bot lane, we kind of give them the opportunity to win the game. Meanwhile, if we instead just let people do his thing, then he will carry it out. So it was a little bit of a silent game from the rest of us, but I think that shows strength and that shows trust from, from us towards him, which is something you wouldn't see during the first week. So. It's once again just us wanting to play together and figuring out how we can be Fnatic 2019, basically. No key player per se, just the team in Fnatic 2019, as you said. Uh, how do you feel about the rest of the season reaching playoffs? You guys are on three win streak right now. Do you, can you make it further? Could you repeat the question, please? Can you make it further, like events to playoff, with you picking up three wins right now? Uh, I mean, I, I would consider us like a really good team, even though Going into this week, we're, we're eighth place. We're still, in my eyes at least, like easily able to contest with most of these teams. So it was, at least to me, just a matter of time before we would translate it on, onto stage and be more of a team. 
And last week was really important, I think, because it made us believe once again in this project that we got going. So I think pretty much any team that's not G2 is, is fine for us. And then even G2 isn't looking like super duper insane or anything. I think they're getting most of their wins from their individual strengths. So if we can somehow, some way manage to allow ourselves to play the game out rather than losing it in our laning phase, then I think even, even against G2, we could manage to get a win. So in my eyes, at least, it's all up for grabs. We might as well be the winners at the end of this thing. So it's just about keep going, like keep grinding. And then in a month's time when Rotterdam comes around, maybe we'll be there and maybe we'll lift the trophy once again. It's nice to hear that everything's possible for you guys. Is there some words you'd like to say to the fans watching you because they've been supporting you so far? Well, I'm always grateful that people stick around when we have tough times. I, it's not my first rodeo, so I've been here before. I've seen, you know, how, how many people leave us when things aren't going well. But I've also seen how many people stick around when things are not going well. So I'm always grateful to those, especially because I feel like Fnatic has always been the most popular team with the most fans. And that kind of made it more exciting to play. And it's just honestly a great experience. And I'm happy to you know, be able to share that with all the fans and my teammates. Well, thank you for your thoughts and congrats on the victory today. Thank you. And to wrap up the day, we're going to send it over to Trevor and the post-game lobby. Take it away, guys.